All right, we are back here on the Crash Report with Matt Brandyberry from from Ashes to New. Matt, what's happening, man? What's up, man? You got that whole mouthful right, man. You got my name right. You did the from with from Ashes to. I say it every interview, man, because most people stumble on it, man. So you got it. <laughs> well, I uh, I do try to come prepared. So awesome. Uh, yes. Um, so I heard uh, before we get into it too much. I heard you built a house. Yeah, yeah. What a time, right, to build a home. Yeah, no kidding. Um, how how did that uh, go? Especially moving in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Wild man, you know we we came into this whole scenario with building a house and doing everything that we're doing um, with like the greatest couple years that this band has ever been able to experience um, in our career to <laughs> be shut down. You know while while uh, while the moving process took place. So um just the weirdest year you know man it's just you know you go from from certainty to uncertainty real fast and it shows how things can can really flip on 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 its head how quickly it can happen yeah this year has been a uh, wild ride for everybody i think yeah. uh you know and I, I think i was uh listening to an interview with you and i think we have something in common uh we both uh well i currently live in amish country i don't know if you do anymore but uh we both grew up around uh you know the amish I do. What, what, or what state are you in, Ohio? Yeah, I'm in Ohio. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I'm, st- I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah. You're still in, uh, where, where are you from in Pennsylvania again? Is it uh, Lancaster area? Lancaster, you're still living there? Yeah, yeah, still in this area. You know, it's funny. I have a, a buddy of mine that uh, he tours for a living, and, and uh, he lives in Texas. And I told him, um, I was driving one time, and I was talking to him. And I was like, man, I was like, I fucking hate getting stuck behind Amish buggies. And he goes, what are you talking about? And he, like, didn't believe that, uh, like, I don't know if he didn't think Amish people, like, existed anymore, or if he, I don't think he's ever seen an Amish person uh, in his entire life, and it's so weird, but I think, I, I think uh, if you don't live here, I guess, well, how would you, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a real thing, you know, for us, it's something that we experience almost every day, if not, you know, every week, but, uh, you know, we, we have a whole tourist attraction here. You know, people come here. It's like the whole south end of, you know, Lancaster is all Amish tourist tourist attraction. So it's it's wild to me because I'm so used to it. But I, I'm like, people come here to I, see this? Like, this is a real thing? Like, this is this, you know, for me, it's like going to, going to the beach or going somewhere, you know, that's got a warmer climate. And some people just want to come and have some shoe fly pie. You know what I mean? It's... <laughs> Well, I, I know a lot of people, especially like older women, and they're like, oh, yeah, this weekend we're making a whole trip of it and we're going to go down to Amish country. And, and you know, you know, I, it's, it's not my thing, but I will tell you, the, uh, the food is all right. And they're, but they're, they build, you know, a lot of furniture and that furniture is like top notch quality. I mean, those guys get shit done. Yeah, man. You know, they built the structure, or the framing to my house. Oh, did they? Um, yeah, man. And they really do, you know, and their food is top notch and the craftsmanship, they, they still take pride in their work. So, you know, that, that still exists in the Amish community and they, you know, wood crafting is like their thing. So it's like, you know, really anything that has to do with any type of woodcraft, like framing to homes and furniture and stuff like that, man, they, it's sturdy, it's solid. And when it comes to Ram Springer, those guys go fucking <laughs> hard, you know? Yeah. You know, what's crazy is they still swing hammers too. So like in the construction trades, like most people use, you know, nail guns and stuff like that to put homes and stuff together. Like if you drive by and I did it with my house, you drive by and you see the Amish guys up working on, on your house, man, they're actually swinging a hammer to put those nails in. It's wild, man. Yeah. Those guys work very, very hard. But yeah, Rumspringer, man, they go, they go nuts. Some never, ever return, man. We've all seen TLC, right? And we've all, we've all been on that channel and oh, yeah, and it, I, like breaking Amish or whatever. I went to high school with a girl who, uh, for the longest time, she was like, she would just date guys that were, you know, Amish guys that were on Rumspringer or whatever. And I never went to one of those parties, but uh, man, I wish I would have. I mean, I think it's like hundreds of people and everybody's just getting fucked up and it's, it's wild. I've never been either, man, but I've, I've heard, I've heard all about them, man. Yeah. Some right. of the craziest, I've heard some of the craziest shit with, with those parties. It's like, wow. I thought I partied hard when I was younger, man. These <laughs> things go nuts. I know. Maybe you'll have to, uh, you know, return to your roots and from ashes to new can play a Rom Springer party at some point. I would imagine that I might not make it out of that party. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, being in this pandemic, your uh, your latest record, Panic, came out in August, I believe it was. 
And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of the content is, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, mental illness and, and trying to put a positive message out. And I know a lot of it was written before the pandemic, but do you think this is one of those, uh, as cliche as it is, one of those, um, I guess, like right place, right time? Like this is the, this is the album for the time that we are living in? I mean, yeah, I think that honestly, it's just been an accumulation of the way that, you know, I felt or people have felt. And normally we'll put out an album that's really inspirational. We'll have songs that are kind of like, you know, don't give up, don't, you know, keep, keep pushing, keep moving forward. And it's like, I think that this album was kind of like a look at it from the perspective of uh, what's the best way to say it? the perspective of just kind of doom and gloom really it's kind of like looking at it from the other angle and going wow am i really going to make it out so <laughs> i think that's kind of just how everyone is feeling now and again i think it's an accumulation of just what we've been going through for the past few years or few decades really as as human beings at least yeah. in america i mean i can't really speak for other countries i don't really know sure you know, sure outside of being a tourist i don't really know anything about any of the the climates in other countries but at least from what we see in america well it just uh you know appears that this album is probably helping a lot of people because with everything going on i think now more than ever people are having a lot of uh you know mental uh issues dealing with depression and whatever because uh you know, they've lost family members or they're out of work or whatever it is so you know it's almost like the timing uh you know, not that the pandemic was a good thing, but, you know, uh, it, it worked out, you know, for the, the topics that this album crosses. Yeah, man, it's wild how, you know, Panic itself, the song itself, um, it's wild how that song came together. And, and some people think, I've seen people call it, uh, what do they call it, COVID core or corona, coronavirus <laughs> core or something like that. Yeah. And, and some people think that we wrote the song about that. And we didn't write that song. We didn't write any of the songs. Like you said, you know, it's the timing of it. We didn't write any of the songs about what's going on. All the songs were written and done before this broke out. Uh, yeah, they were written like the end of 2019, right? Of yeah, most yeah. Of so we were we were in the studio. We finished up before Christmas 2019. So, um, which it was a thing, but we didn't really know about it. I mean, we didn't really know much about it in America until after the New Year's, you know, late January, February, March. March, we were our tour was cut off because of it. So yeah, you guys were on tour with skillet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. And so it's been a weird, it's been a weird ride, but you know, I, I, I recently have, you know, gone back through our catalog and I've noticed that some of the stuff is, is kind of prophetic. And I, I was saying, I was actually joking with Danny because we made a, a, uh, a parody of wake me up when September ends called wake me up when 2020. Ends. I, yes. I, I saw that. And I remember that. the end of it was like the purge. And I said to him, I was like, man, I really hope like, because it was like, it was like the new year 2021 came in and then the purge happened. And I was like, man, like, you know, all these songs have been very prophetic. I hope that video is not prophetic. Like that's the last <laughs> thing we need is a purge 2021. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I went back through the catalog and I noticed like a, a, a B side track from our last album, the future is called make everything. Okay. And I was listening through that song and people had been talking about it. And I was reading the lyrics and I'm like, man, this is like exactly everything that's going on right now. So really, I think it is just for me as a writer and I'll speak for myself in specific is I just look at what people are dealing with or what the world, the current climate of the world is. And instead of taking a political view, I take more of a personal view and I write about those things. And I think that it's just something that a lot of people can really uh, relate to. Sure. Well, and that's, uh, you know, that's important, uh, being, you know, with the, considering the time that we're in, but, you know, being on tour with skillet, right. When all this fell apart, man, that had to be a fucking bummer. Uh, you know, I mean, I think yeah. the tour was coming to an end though. There was only what, like one or two dates left. So it wasn't the end of the world, but, uh, that still has to suck. Cause I'm sure those shows were fucking huge. Yeah, they were great, man. And, and it was really, I mean, Ledger opened it, but I mean, that's Jen's band. And then, yeah. you know, it was, it was, so it was really kind of like it was us and Skillet and it was sold out like every night. It was wild, man, you know, and we've, we've been fortunate to be a part of great tours, like a tour like that, you know, throughout our entire career. So I'm very grateful for that. But yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Cause we played New Jersey at the, I believe the Starland. And that was like when they were really talking about shutting things down in America. And we didn't really think much of it. We're like, yeah, let's do this. Everybody stay safe, but let's have fun. And then we went where I think we played Maine the next day. And then we had a day off and we were supposed to play 
um, the Albany area. Oh, okay. And that day off is when everything got shut down. So Maine was the last show. Um, I think it was Portland. Portland, Maine was the last show before everything got shut down. And, you know, when it was shutting down, we were like, oh, man, this is a bummer, but we'll go out. You know, a couple months, we'll come back in the summer and we'll get everything together. And it was just like, it's like as every day or week or month kind of passed, it was kind of getting more and more grim looking. Oh, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, my day job is a booking agent. And, uh, you know, I remember when all this happened. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll just start moving shit to the summer and, you know, we'll be good to go. This will be gone and, and we'll forget about it. And then summer comes and it's like, oh man, we'll just push it to the fall. And then, the, you know, and it, it's, it's a never ending cycle of, you know, who knows when this thing is, is going to be over and we're going to go back to normal. Yeah, man. And that's, <laughs> that's exactly where we're at. Just, everyone's very hopeful, right? Everyone's like, oh, well, we're going to get it together. And you, you see people, you know, creating dates for 2020. Uh, 2021 and, and doing all these different things but it's as a band and as a member myself and as this being my career my livelihood it's really just like kind of throwing a dart at a moving dartboard and hoping that it sticks and that's kind of that's kind of where the industry is right now and I mean I'm grateful that we had such a great tour to to cap it off before everything went to shit but I mean that's kind of that's kind of the state of it right now man you guys done any uh driving shows I don't think I saw any but <laughs> did you guys do anything like that no, you know, I'll be honest with you. I have fought really hard to not do anything outside the norm. My dog's back here losing his mind, <laughs> as you can probably see and hear. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I just kind of tried to fight to do things outside the norm or to not do things outside the norm because I really didn't want to make it the norm. Does that make sense? So it's no, like no, I didn't I want to do it to, to think that, oh, wow, this might be what we're doing now. No, I agree. And I went to a, I went to one of those driving shows and, uh, you know, it was cool, but, uh, man, it was, uh, it was an acoustic show. It was, um, Aaron Lewis and Solly from Godsmack. And, uh, what is your dog's name? I'm sorry, man. He is, he's a puppy and he's nuts. That's right. His name is, his name is Philly. Cause I'm an Eagles fan, even though they suck really hard right now. <laughs> so, uh, uh Anyways, so yeah, so we go to this driving show, and and uh, I mean, it was an acoustic show, so I'm sure that played into it. But man, we could not hear anything at all. Oh, really? Oh my god, it was so bad. Um, yeah. And I, I don't think it was like properly set up. I don't think the you know the staff. I don't think they were prepared. Uh, you know, it was just it was just a mess. So I, I'm definitely not into the driving thing. I, I I definitely like you. I do not want that to become the norm. Yeah. Have you ever seen it from Ashes to New Show, man? Uh, no, but I did. Uh, I did have a band uh, on one of your tours. I don't want to say who because I'm not working with the band anymore. But okay, no I, big deal, man. Uh, um, yes, I, no, I, no, I don't think I've seen you before though. No, oh, so we're like that's the big thing with me is like like you were saying like it's an acoustic, so kind of played into it, and you know. But for me, like our shows are our energy. You know what I mean? And like we, I mean, I'm sore during tour, man. I mean, my knees have been screwed up because of how hard we play, you know? So it's like when we're on stage, we're everywhere, we're jumping up and down. So I can't imagine being in a scenario where I don't have that reciprocated and where the fans aren't also losing their minds and jumping up and down and moving their hands and stuff. So it's like, when you think about these things where it's like socially distanced crowds or uh, driving concerts or digital concerts, it's like, for me, and I, I can, I think I could speak for the rest of uh, my band, and I think I could speak for a lot of people in the music industry, at least in our side, is that energy being reciprocated back to us is a big part of what we do. So I think that, you know, that's one of the main reasons I didn't want to accept any of this as a norm is because I think that you're missing a huge part of the show when it's not, um, you know, it's not everybody all together. No, and, and I agree. I, I think, um, you know, the vibe of a driving show uh, you know, I think it works for, you know, like the, the show I went to, it was, you know, it was acoustic and it, and it works. Obviously there was a sound problems, but you know, it, it, it fit that kind of vibe cause it's an acoustic show. You're not fucking jumping up and down and you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, going to see a, you know, like a full live show of somebody that's, you know, it's energetic and it's, it's fast and this and that, you know, I, to me, that just doesn't really translate well to sitting in your car or, you know, in a fucking <laughs> lawn chair right outside your car or whatever you know so i, I totally like the agree. idea of you're from amish country again we can we can circle back i don't know if you have this where you're from but where i'm from we have a demo derby 
Yes. And yes. Do you have monster truck rallies and demo derbies we, and stuff? Where, uh, at? where I live, there's no monster truck rallies. But uh, so every year, the uh, uh, the county fair, the biggest uh, attraction is the tractor pull. Um, you know, and that goes till fucking yeah. two in the morning sometimes. I mean, I remember yeah. being a kid. I lived, I don't know, maybe five, six miles away from the fairgrounds. And if you were outside while it was going on, you could fucking hear it. It they're louder than any concert. Or, yeah. I mean, it's like the loudest fucking thing. But yeah, we do have demo derbies. I'm not a track to pull guy, but I do get into a demo, good demo derby. Yeah, demo derbies are dope, man. So like, if we needed to do some sort of driving, I'd be into doing a demo derby. Oh well, yeah, it's like, like a, a you know mosh, I mean? a mosh pit. Derby. Yeah, it'd be sick, man. <laughs> it'd be entertain. It'd be entertainment and entertainment. Like it would just be all all out entertainment, man. It's like something out of uh, idiocracy. You know what I mean? Like that would, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. That to me, that would be an exciting uh, experience for a driving show, you know, but yeah, to go watch a, a band play a full electric set, you know, if, and, and it's, and it's a rock band. Yeah. Playing, you know, sitting in a, you know, cause when, when I went, you had to sit, you know, you like parked your car and you had a parking spot next to you that you could use for like your chairs or whatever. And it was the most like, just, it was horrible. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, it was horrible, you know? Yeah, I, I can't imagine, you know, before I always tell everyone, like, I'm a fan first. And before From Ashes to News started getting big, I, I loved concerts. I love bands like that's, you know, one of the things that I did growing up. And, you know, even doing this and going to festivals and being a part of that environment and that energy is unlike anything else that you can experience in this world. And that's why it is what it is. And it, it exists, at least did exist and hopefully exists again but you know what i mean like that energy and that feeling and that vibe that you get from whatever side of the stage you're on is what makes it what it is i can listen to music in my car all day long and i can sing and i can scream to that music but that's not going to be the same energy it's not going to be the same vibe so unless it's maybe you're going out and chilling out with a with a blunt to dave matthews band you know what i mean sure. then then maybe it's, you know, a rock and metal. That's again, like I tried to try to not make it the new norm. Now, will we, ha will we potentially have to get into doing some of this streaming stuff? I think so. Like, I, I don't know that we can really stay away from it. And, you know, I, I think that I, I, I personally feel like it's going to be a thing that most bands are going to have to do if they're not already doing. So um, we're looking into it. We're looking into doing some streaming stuff. I, I wouldn't say the driving stuff as much as the streaming stuff, but, uh, you know, we're looking into doing some, some things for the fans, at least, you know, to, you know, they, they want to see us. I get it. I understand, you know, we see comments and stuff. They're into it. So if people are into it, you know, we'll give them what they're into. And that's kind of what this band has always been about is just what do the fans want? Ask the fans what they want. We do that through our social media networks. We'll ask, Hey, what do you guys want? What do you want to see? Do you want to see this? Do you, you know what I mean? Do you want to be a part of this? And well, and you're a very active guy. On, says, we do. You're very active on social media too. And I see you responding to, you know, fans. And uh, I think I've seen uh, the band's YouTube channel comment on a couple videos, uh, you know, that other people had posted or whatever. So yeah, I mean, it is good to take that into account. And as far as the live streams, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people and I felt like this too. At first it was like, well, why the fuck would I pay, you know, 15 bucks or whatever to watch a live stream when I can just go on YouTube and I can watch a full concert of that band for free? Yeah, and, man. you know, and, and, and I get that mindset totally. But I also think that, uh, you know, if it's a, if the live stream is done right, like uh, the last episode we had Steel Panther on. And, you know, they are, you know, incorporating, they incorporate like skits, you know, in like they'll do some songs and then, you know, some skits or whatever. And like, to me, that is worth paying a ticket because it's, it's a full entertainment package. So right. I think if a live stream can be done, you know, correctly and creatively, um, you know, I, I think it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Ice Nine did that. I don't know if it was really a live stream that they did, but I know that they used like footage from a show that they did and then they spliced it together with a movie. Now I didn't watch it. Um, haven't really had the time. Honestly, I'm trying to keep myself busy right now, but I, I did hear that it was really cool and people really liked it. So I agree, man. I think that there is a way to do it logistically for us. It's kind of a nightmare because none of us are in the same area. So, uh, you know, that, that was, that, that's one of the other things about it for us is, you know, 
when we've done things like we've done these, what we call the quarantine covers, like we did these covers just to kind of keep ourselves busy. We didn't realize that it was going to be lasting this long and that we were going to need to continue to keep ourselves busy. But we did those remotely. Um, you know, we did those via Zoom or we did those via, you know, taking videos of ourselves doing our, our parts and stuff like that. So we did that all remotely. It was able to be done. So a live stream or a streaming concert with original material, we would obviously have to get together uh, you know, get a venue or, you know, someplace to be able to do it and, and put that all together. So logistically, it's, it's, it's a lot different than a lot of the stuff that we've already done. But again, it's not at this point, it's not out of the question. It's something that, you know, we are entertaining because again, if, if you don't entertain it, um, who knows, who knows how long it's going to last. And I think that's kind of been the mentality is, is like, we're hopeful that things are going to go back and we're going to be able to do things again here soon, but we, we really don't know. So that's kind of the mentality that we as a band currently have. Yeah, I mean, I I just uh, earlier today I was thinking, uh, man, we've been in this since March, which is I don't know eight or nine months ago now, and it's yeah, it's like oh my god, I can't believe time has gone. It it feels in a way like it's gone so fast, but it's also gone so slow. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't even like uh, I don't even remember what it feels like to to book a tour anymore. It's you know, it feels like it's been so long. Yeah, man, I was just talking with management today. I was just saying that because they were. There's obviously like offers that come in for digital stuff or there's offers still. There's still parts of the country that have shows going on. Yeah. yeah there's like social distance stuff going on and you got certain parts of the country that really there's like no holds bars yet. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's like we do get offers still. And but the thing is, is when you get an offer to play a show, regardless if it's a live stream show or an actual show, there's other things that play into that. So there's other uh, questions that you have to ask yourself again, logistically, like if I do a live stream for this person who wants to guarantee us this amount of money to go on their platform, am I potentially hurting the fact of doing a live stream for ourselves? Or if we go play a show, is it going to cost us more money to put everything together, rehearse for one show and, you know, come back like, because if we rehearse for one show, it's essentially rehearsing for an entire tour, but we would only play one show. Yeah. So, you know, I was talking to management literally just before we got on this call and I was saying to him, I was like, do you remember when you just booked a show? <laughs> like when someone just called or the agent was like, Hey, I got this tour or Hey, I've got this festival. Like this is happening. Do you guys want to do it? This is what it is. I was like, do you remember that? I was like, it feels like it's so long ago that it was just simple. Like you would just call me up and be like, hey, uh, for example, welcome to Rockville wants you to play. You know, are you guys into it? We can put a tour around all these different festivals. It's like, yeah, let's do it. Now yeah. it's like, huh, what all do we have to make sure doesn't go wrong? To, you know what I mean? It's like right, crazy, right. man. Yeah, it's, it's a mess, man. And and uh, yeah, you know, there are spots around the country that, that are doing shows, but I, I don't think, you know, and I see bands, you know, trying to go out there and, and build little runs out of it. But to me, it just, it, it doesn't make sense because no. I mean, it, logistically it'd be a fucking headache and, yep. and there's, there's, there's no point. I, you know, I see some bands like, Oh, we, we just got to play a fucking show, man. So let's go, let's go book, you know, however many shows in a row. And it's like, yeah, but for you know why like there you know what i mean i i think there has to be a, a reason to go out and tour not just because there's nothing to you know nobody has anything to do let's go play a show but you know right. now is just not the right time I, I i don't think i think that our industries you know i think that a lot of people on the outside looking in may think that um musicians ones that have record deals or ones that have radio deals or whatever i think that that in 2020 that there's an unrealistic um, perception of what some artists are um, financially. And I know, I know that some artists and bands um, just below our level are having a real hard time. And, you know, you, you, if you drag this thing out much longer, I mean, there's no, there's no um, support for them. It's not like, it's not like, you know, you just, work the nine to five and then you get your unemployment because your job's closed. Like you really have to fight to get those different things. And most of the time these guys are 10, 10, 99ers, you know what I mean? So things are a lot different in the way that the pay scales are. So I see some bands are like, we need to tour because we need to make money. 
And that makes sense because that's for the majority, that's where bands are making their money. You know what I mean? Like sure. they're not making and, their money. And I agree, but but I think the problem with touring, you know, right now is that, you know, even these spots that are doing shows, you know, of course you go down to there's you know, you can go to some total fucking hillbilly towns where they do not give a fuck. But, you know, for the most part, any club that is doing shows, they are, you know, they're socially distanced. They're, you know, at half capacity or, you know, a quarter capacity, whatever it may be. And, you know, some of these bands, uh, you know, to me, it would, it would, I don't even understand how they could make money because there's, you know, like if they already don't make much money as it is in, when there's not a pandemic and then you have to go out and play to a quarter capacity or half capacity or this or that, you know, how are you? how are you making money? How, you know what I mean? Yep. So I see what you're saying. And I know yep. uh, these smaller bands do have to make money, but uh, to me, well, I'm just saying they use that as like their, their drive. And, but you're absolutely right. And that's, that's why, you know, circling back, that's why we haven't done anything because like, like we said, it's a logistic nightmare Yeah, and it really isn't, it's really not profitable at yeah. least to the point where it's worth the potential health risk or it's worth, you know, the potential, um, you know, the, the potential view that people may have for you going out and doing something during a pandemic. So, you know, it, it's just, it's really not worth all that. So again, I think it really just is, it's a logistic nightmare. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, and the best way to put it. Yeah. And I, I, I have seen, I mean, people do take it seriously. Like I, I've seen yeah. some, some bands and, and people outside of me just get shit on for trying to do something during all this. Yeah, and they're like, are you fucking crazy? You know, you obviously don't give a fuck yeah. about anybody, you know? So yeah, and I think there's an argument to be played from both sides of that, because I agree, like we should take things very seriously. I agree with that. At the same time, you know, working is how you live, you know? So it's like, I have, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic for both sides, I think. So it's like, you know, I, I get it. Let's, it, let's take this very serious because we should. And then also, we also have to be respectful of the fact that people need to make money to live. Well, especially again, if they're following in guidelines. Our industry, is there really <laughs> again the logistic nightmare? So it's like right, right. You keep circling back, man. It's like I don't know. Like, does it make sense? Yeah. Well, you know, but especially if there, there's no reason to shit on anyone, especially if they they are following the restrictions that are put in place. You know, and they're not doing right. a super spreader like uh, Trap did you know, or something like that. You know. So yeah, no, I've I heard I, about, I've heard about some, <laughs> some of those things, man. Yeah. It, it's wild times we're living in brother. Like who would have thought that, you know, even six or not six, but you know, 10, 12 months ago, who would have thought that this would have even been a conversation, you know, oh, I know. it's wild, man. Like this is actually like, I'm alive for this. Like this is, this is happening in my lifetime. Yeah. This is uh this is something that will be talked about for who knows how long we'll be telling our, our great grandkids, you know? Oh man. For forever forever like it's it's never going away speaking of trapped and the super spreader what do you what do you make of the whole trap situation i don't you know i, I just <laughs> did, did you see that their facebook account got removed i did yeah I, I don't know man like i okay so i believe wholeheartedly in freedom of speech i consider myself a patriot i consider myself someone who loves their country and will stand up for the rights of our constitution that's who I am. I, I believe that it was, I believe that, you know, the United States of America is a beautiful country because of the way that it was created. Do I think that we have problems and things need, some things need to change? Sure. Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, and what I'm getting is a larger story. What I'm getting at here with trapped is, you know, he's very vocal in the way that he sees things. And I don't think that it's wrong to have freedom of speech. I just think that there's particular platforms for it. And I think that, you know, as a musician, and this goes for both sides of the coin, by the way, as a musician, you have fans that come from all walks of life that respect you for your art and your craft that you do as a musician. So like from Ashes to New, we write songs that people can really relate to. It doesn't mean that they're relating them to a very specific thing. Like it's not... It's not like it's all political driven at one point. You know what I mean? So it's it's very broad. So anyone can really listen to your music and they can just put it to something in their life. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is I don't use our platform for my political views and I don't use our platform for, you know, my beliefs as to the way the world works. Um, our platform is used for our music. Our platform is used for our fans. Do I have my own 
views and beliefs? Absolutely. Everybody does. I just think that there's a time and place and specific platform for that. Now, if the dude from Trapped wanted to create his own media outlet right then go that, yeah then go go wild with it then so be it i mean people might not like you for your view, your point of view i mean and that's just the risk you take but when you're using a platform that people didn't sign up for that particular point of view then i think that it's shit and I, that same same thing goes for people who are driving whatever it is down your throat politically and i i feel that way about sports i feel that way about you know other uh, other musicians i just think that you know your platform is used for what your platform is used for you shouldn't use it for other things yeah well i agree you know unless you're rage against the machine or or another sure. you know band that's based around politics but you know a band like trapped which admittedly i, I gotta tell you uh, I, I think trapped outside of headstrong they have some some great songs uh i was i was a huge trap fan back in the day man yeah i, I think i love, I love their stuff well and i think when you put them up against you know some of the other bands of that era like saving abel or saliva or whatever trap just has some some great songs man but yeah. yeah i i don't think you know facebook the trapped facebook page is is for that but i also you know a lot of these uh there's a lot of of music news uh you know blogs and websites that i think also you know now kind of have some sort of political agenda um mm -hmm. and i to me i don't i don't like that either because i i think you know if you're if you care about you know bands or whatever you just want to hear about bands, not, oh, let's go shit all over this guy because he uh, he is going to vote for so-and-so, so fuck sure. this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, man, I, and that's that's my that's my exact outlook on it is I don't – I'm not saying that, that artists shouldn't use their platforms to do good. That's not what I'm saying. So I don't want anyone to take that out of context. I'm saying that if you're going to use your platform, don't use it to be divisive and create division. Like I just don't think that – you know, telling someone how to vote one way. Like I saw, you know, I saw Timberlake tell, you know, basically his entire fan base on Instagram. He told them all to vote for, for Joe Biden. And it's like, who is listen, this? It, Justin Timberlake. Oh, okay. And it's like, listen, that that's, that's fine. Like if that's, if that's who you're voting for, whatever, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, don't go and tell people that they're a bad person if they don't do that. Like yeah, that, well, and because that's the thing that bothers me is, is that there's too much division because it's almost like a, it's almost like the most heated football game. And like, this is, we're in like the biggest Super Bowl ever. Right now. Right. <laughs> and, and there's two teams, man. And it's really kind of divided right down the middle. And I just don't think that again, it, I, I, we're going to use this a lot circling back. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, artists just shouldn't use their platforms to create division well and you know a lot of fans i would imagine you guys have a number of fans like this too you know they feel a, a very deep connection uh with you know whoever they're into so yeah. if that you know whoever it is that they're into if they're like oh you need to vote for so and so or whatever it's like they they it's almost like insulting uh some of your other fans you know and i, I unless that is your goal like Rage Against the Machine, where they are very, they have their, they have their thing, and they've stuck with it their entire career, and you know it is what it is. But you know, a very neutral artist such as Trapped or Justin Timberlake or whatever, yeah, I, I don't think uh, shoving things down people people's throats is the way to go about it. Yeah, man, I'm I'm not about it at all, man. I'm I'm about just people being people, and you know, I I, I don't like to get political at all in conversations with with people outside of like my very inner circle sure. because I think that I think that we're all deep rooted into what we believe and it's very hard to change that you can't force someone to change their mind and I think that when you try to start forcing change is when you start creating division like and that really happens with to me that it really stems from you know re religion I mean we can see it in religion and we can see it in politics and we can see it in, um, you know, the just everyday life as human beings is we try and drive a, a wedge in between what somebody believes and what somebody else believes, then it, it creates division. And I hate it, honestly, man. Like I, I've never seen, you know, I'm young, but I've never seen so much hatred. 
Uh, and it's really honestly, like for me, like I'm usually out on tour or I'm in the studio and I'm, I'm doing things that I love trying to create things for people to, to help them cope, help myself cope and, and really get through life. Right. I mean, because life can be difficult. Um, it can be great, but it can be difficult. So I think that what we should do as much as we can to help each other get through these things rather than tear each other apart. And I've had the ability to kind of sit back a lot because I've been off work since March um and sit back and see what the the social media platforms have to offer and what people are saying and it's like man like this is just like it's crazy it's crazy to think that people are treating each other this way i um, i swear to god every single day i'm just like when i get on facebook i'm like oh my god i, I gotta get off of here like yeah, man. i gotta get off of here and and i i find myself unfollowing uh people every day uh yeah. you know even if it's even if they're going off about something that I might agree with them, yeah. it's like that there's, there's no point. You know, when, when I get on face, when I post something on Facebook, it'll be a stupid selfie or, you know, a picture of my kid or something, you know, I, I don't, uh, cause it's, it, 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 it bugs the shit out of me when I see people on, uh, you know, have some agenda on, on a social media platform. I post things about, th you know, I try to make people think. Yeah. And regardless of what side, like if I post something, I'm trying to make you think, but yeah. I'll pay attention to the comment section. I don't always comment back, but I'll pay attention to the comment section. If I see people fighting on my posts, I delete the post. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I, I didn't post it. I don't post things to make people argue. Now, if there's like, you know, if people are opening a dialogue and they're actually having a healthy discussion and people are open-minded to having a healthy discussion, I'm all for that, man. Like that's, that's fucking incredible. And that's what we should be doing. But when I see people that are just like, you're this kind of person. And it's like, <laughs> no, I agree. There's the, it's yeah. almost like there's no such thing anymore as a respectful and civilized debate. It's always, Oh, you don't agree with me. It's, well, you can fuck right off then. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is, man, is I, I think about this a, a lot because I've met so many people doing what I do. And especially now more than ever, I think, well, would that person or the, some of those people that I've met, would we agree on certain things? Probably not. And that probably stems across many different things that we, we deal with in everyday life, not just politics or religion or anything like that. I think that we would probably disagree on a lot, but we would also probably agree on a lot. Yeah. So, you know, there is, there is something, there's common ground for everybody. And I think that when we see people face to face, even if it's like this, but more so in person, when we see people face to face, we, we have less of a knee jerk reaction to things that they say. And we have less time to kind of, you know, to sit and think about it. Like when you see a post on, on Facebook and you're like, hmm, how does that make me feel? Yeah. Yeah. You know, how does that post make me feel? Oh, I feel triggered. I should say something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's like, yeah we're not going to do that in real life. Like if someone says something to you in real life to face to face that you don't like, that's not necessarily maybe something personal that you really don't like. You're not going to just, just haul off and punch them in the face. Like you're going <laughs> right, to, right, you're right. going to think about it a little bit, you know, you're going to, you're going to take, take it into consideration and you're going to go, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, let, let's continue this conversation on. Maybe we're going somewhere with this. Maybe we're leading somewhere, but I mean, a text message has no emotion. You know, there's no way for you to be able to, I mean, my manager sometimes has to send things to me and say, no tone. He has to yeah, say that yeah. in his messages. He's like, no tone. And it's like, dude, like I get it, but it's like, not everybody does. And I think that that's a, a big problem. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I think, um, you know, you know, the, the more time goes on, I, I think people, uh, politics aside, people are becoming more accepting of uh different lifestyles and yeah. and you know whatever it may be but i think uh you know i, I remember when i was a kid in, in school granted i was a kid so life is quite a bit different but it wasn't this whole like oh you're a republican fuck you oh you're a democrat <laughs> fuck you you know and that's like that's that's what it has become today and and it's it's I don't know. It's, it's beyond me why people uh, think like that, because I think you need to, uh, unless it's, you know, very hateful things, but I think you need to look, uh, you always need to look at somebody else's perspective and yeah. at, maybe you can't relate to it, but you at least need to attempt to understand it. Sure. Or, or like in my position, what I do is I don't even attempt to understand it. One of my things is, is that I, that I love to do is, is like, Hey, if your way of life is the way that you like to live 
and it's not harming my way of life. That's awesome. Yeah. Who cares? I think everyone should be happy. Yeah. You know? So it's like, you know, recently I, I was just saying the other day, I'm like, po- I've never in my life cared about politics ever. Like I've never gotten into it. Um, I do think that we all need to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on. I, I think I'm it, right there I think with it's you. Smart because our lives are really dictated by the people that we put into power. So I think that that's important that we do pay attention, but politics has infiltrated a lot of our lives recently. And I think that a lot of us have, you know, at least if there's a lot, a lot of people like myself and my wife, I, we never really paid attention to this stuff before. And now all of a sudden it's, it's literally unavoidable. It, it is, is everywhere. Yeah. So I agree with you, man. Like, you know, that we have to be accepting of the way that other people want to live their lives. And uh, again, just the way that I do that is, is I just accept the way people want to live their lives. And I don't think, again, if their life's not affecting my life, then who cares? Who, yeah. Yeah. Have at it. Like it, I, I made a post on Facebook the other day. I was like, you remember when it was like a bad thing? to be in other people's business all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, remember it was like, it's none of your business or mind your business. Like that was a real thing. Like it was yeah. like, and now all of a sudden, like we're in each other's business. Yeah, total 180. Day, man. And it's like, you know, people are airing their dirty laundry out on, on social media. And it's like, it's like, man, like, again, like you're saying like unfollowing or unfriending people, it's like you're scrolling through and it's like, why? I don't need to know that. I don't care. Like, well, it, it, just, it adds it adds unnecessary frustration to my life, yeah. you know, because yeah, I'll man. see I'll see a post of people uh, that I don't even realize I'm fr- I don't even know who they are, but somehow I'm friends yeah. with them. And I'm like, oh, my God, why am I even like I, I do not fucking care, you know, and that's that's when I do the unfriend thing, you know, because uh, I don't get into the, all the Facebook drama and, you know, this and that. Oh, my God, man. Well, there's some people that live for it. Oh, I know. Trust me. I yeah. I, I know. <laughs> That's like some their people, life, and it's like if they can get attention through that avenue, then they do it. And yeah. it's like it's funny because like I have I have anxiety, and I deal with anxiety in different ways. Sometimes it hits me in in bad ways. Sometimes it's sometimes it's like, oh, okay, Matt, calm down a little bit. You're just being overly anxious. But like if I post something that gets a lot of conflict, I I like I I literally sweat. Yeah, hey, I know the feeling. I really do. Like, I'm like, I don't want people to think about it this way. You know what I mean? And it's not like, cause I'm worried about my career because I honestly, man, I, I'm seeing a lot of these people that are s- like spewing a lot of hateful shit and their careers are booming because of it. Yeah. I won't do that. I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to sell my, I'm not going to sell myself out there. Um, and put myself out there as a villain just to gain notoriety and, and publicity. But if I do put something out there, that's a little like, you know, you can look at it from both angles and be like, Hmm, and kind of raise an eyebrow at it. I'll sit there and I'll literally sweat. Like, <laughs> oh, why did I make that post? You know, what am I doing? Should I delete it? Should I delete it? Yeah. yeah. I, but what if they screen cap it and they bring yeah. it back later? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, th- that's who I am though, man. Confrontation sucks. Uh, hate sucks. It, it just like for real, like, like why can't we just live you know and, and i know that there's going to be some people on the other side that are going to argue and go well your life's a lot different than my life or your life you live your life a, a lot differently than the way other people live their lives and we need to have these fights and we need to have these battles and it's like i'm not disagreeing it's just maybe we have a different way to go about it yeah that's all no i i, I really do agree and I, I i wish people were more on the same page with that yeah uh, man i think that again we all have something in common yeah. All of us, everybody, if we can find common ground, then I think that we could start to rebuild. Ourselves well, we're all human beings. I mean, that's the most, society. that's the most important thing. We're all human beings and we yeah. need to, we need to, uh, we need to, you know, we all, we're all here. We all need to work together and, and figure it out. You know, it's all, you know, the, the hippie generation, my parents' generation, they had it right. Like it's all about, it's all about love and, and unity, man. And it's, it really is. And I think that once you lose your way and you, you dive down that hate hole, that sounded weird. You dive down that, <laughs> dive, dive dive down, down the hate that, hole. Yes. That, that hate Avenue, man. Like it really starts to spiral out of control and yeah. we just need some, we need some, some leadership, some real leadership to come back and give us, you know, love, peace and unity, man. And like, that's, that doesn't just go for America. That goes for the whole world, man. Like we just need people that are legit, that are sincere and people that care 
to be in charge of, of, of leading the way, man. I agree. Uh, getting back to the band before we uh, <laughs> wrap up here. Uh, so you guys are going to be on the upcoming soundtrack for the movie Snow Babies, which I believe is already out, but then you're going to like physically appear in the Retaliators, which uh, that I don't believe yeah. is out yet, correct? Correct. So Snow, ba- Snow Babies is out. Um, wild movie. So it's, uh, I watched it um, a few weeks ago, and it was kind of like one of them things where it, it, it's got some un- uncomfortable parts in it, man. You know, it's it's real life, real life shit. So it's you know stuff people are dealing with. So it's it's good to be a part of something that's bringing um, attention to a serious problem that I think that needs to be worked on. So here we go, talking about uh, a serious problem that people are dealing with, but again, unity. So what what is the kinda, what is the serious problem in the movie? I have not seen uh, drugs, it. drug addiction, drug addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I, I was an addict and I, I went through some of that stuff myself, not, not to the extent of what's going on in that movie, but you know, we all deal with demons different ways. So it's, it's good to be a part of something and bring, you know, bring awareness to something that I think that we, we can all again, find common ground and, and agree that it's bad and needs to be worked on. So um, that snow babies and retaliators is completely opposite end of the spectrum it is like a, a horror thriller. And uh, yeah, man, we, we perform it. It's pretty cool. So you have like a, that's what I was going to say. So you guys aren't like acting in the movie. You're, you're performing at some point in the movie then. Yeah, we are us. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of other bands in, you know, and band members that are in the movie. Yeah, I think um, I, I, I uh, cause I, I found the IMDB page and I, I think I thought I saw Tommy Lee, uh, was in yeah. that movie. Um, yeah. I didn't catch, I, I seen the whole cast. I wasn't familiar Kobe with Shaddix is in it. Uh, oh, okay. Right on. Well, the, well both, movie, both of these I movies think. are better noise, uh, productions, right? Which yeah, is, yeah. which is your label is our record label. Correct. They did the dirt. So it was a big success for them and. You know, they started doing some other stuff because obviously if you, you find success in one area, you might as well try another. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, man, there's a lot of band members and stuff in the movie. And it's really cool. It's 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 I haven't seen the movie myself. I just know that it's a new experience for us. Like we've never done anything like that. We've obviously shot music videos, so it's relatively the same. But this is obviously on a larger scale, larger budget, um, just nope. something real cool to be a part of to kind of just put down on the resume. When does this one come out? The Retaliators? I think spring. Spring. I'm not hundred percent sure. Now, you know, the, the fact that better noise is, is doing these movies, they're doing these two. And like you said, the dirt, and then, you know, also Sumerian now is, is, you know, really getting into to film and TV and stuff. Do you think that, you know, given the current state of the music industry with or without a pandemic, do you think that this is a, uh, becoming a trend that we'll see more of where record labels, start to dab more and more into the the film and television world you know i don't know man i mean i guess it's really going to depend on the success of what the ones that already currently are doing it um i think that well you know like a lot of the bigger record labels are you know they they, they share that the like warner brothers is is you know movies and music right 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 so but I'm, I'm, i guess i'm saying more of the 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 you know that not the majors, you know, not right, Atlantic the indie and things style like. labels. And yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, obvi- I mean obviously, I think if the budget's there for them, right? If they have money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it costs, you know, it costs a lot of money to do those things, so it's really kind of putting your money where your mouth is. You know, it's like it's it's an investment, and it's really it's a a leap of faith. I would I would guess. I mean, I'm not the one who's doing it, but I guess in a smaller scenario, if if you you're not raking in the money like Sony you know, or something like that. Like sure. it's, it's, it's a real investment and it's probably a real leap of faith to put your money into a movie budget that could cost millions and hope that that movie doesn't tank. Yeah. So, uh, the retaliators will be out in the spring. You said that is a more of a horror thriller movie. You guys are performing in the movie and then you'll also be on the soundtrack for snow babies, but you're not in the actual movie. Uh, but that one is already out, right? Yes, that's out already. You can get that on Amazon Prime. And then uh, to wrap it up, what is coming for From Ashes to New after COVID subsides? Um, kick assery. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, hopefully, a lot of fun, man. I, I really don't know. You know, it's like we've we like we said earlier. Like we we have been making plans, um, but it seems like that's just a moving dartboard, you know. So it's like we were actually supposed to to go out and work in Los Angeles and. 
um, the end of this year and work on music and just write and do some stuff to record some stuff. But I'm, it's just not doesn't look like those cards are are falling in the right order right now. So it's, things are moving along or moving around. So um, if it comes back soon, man, like I, I'm going to be like, you know, the kid in the candy store, kid on Christmas. You know, it's just going to be. I mean, like Kevin McAllister when he's waving his arms around in the air, running down the hallway after he puts aftershave on his face or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's that. I think that's what you're gonna see from a lot of bands. I think that's what you're gonna see from a lot of fans. Like, I think we're at the point now as bands, fans, and everybody involved, we need it. I don't think it's something that we want. I mean, it is something that we want, but you know what I mean. Like, it's something that we need. When you guys are, uh, I think I've seen trying to make up the one or two more skillet shows. I think in I saw in like February or March. Yeah, man. But again, that's it, right. it was like it was like I think originally it was like July or something. I, I don't even pay attention. Honestly, I don't even pay attention anymore. Yeah. Um, I'll uh, get a phone call. You know, I mean, my agent and you know, obviously, you know, um, my agent will call management. And management will call me and say, "Hey, this is this is concrete. This is happening. This is what we're doing." Yeah. Um, but until, you know, I'm, I, I've, I've spent the last several months not trying to get my hopes up on anything because there's been multiple times of, of letdown. So, you know, it's just, uh, right now it's, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you ask your, your parents for a new PlayStation or something and they go, we'll see. And it's like, okay, you know, that's yeah. kind of how I feel right now. It's like, all right, mom and dad, I'm on the, I'm on the, we'll see. There's no, yes, there's no, no, we're in the land of maybe right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think everybody's very excited to get back to work and and uh, go see a show. And you know, I've had to pick up a couple of hobbies because who knows when when all this is going to be over. So, yeah, man, but, it's wild, dude. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think I'll ever go back out on tour and go. I wish I was home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. that's the thing. It's a real thing. It's a love hate relationship. Like when you're at home, you're at home for too long and go, man, I wish I was on tour. And then you get out on tour, you're like, man, I wish I was home. And it's like, maybe for the next solid couple of years when we start, I probably won't be going, man, I wish I was home. But just careful what you wish for. Yeah, I hope if, if anything good comes out of this, I hope it's a, you know, there's a newfound appreciation for live music. <laughs> Hell uh, yeah, man. I think it's going to be nuts, bro. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. And I, I can't wait till, you know, what, whatever it is that sets us on the, the path to normalcy, I can't wait until it happens, man. We just get out there and fuck shit up. That's, that's your answer right there. We talked about it for another five minutes, but your, your shirt, your short answer is what is from ashes to new going to do when it goes back to normal. We're going to fuck, fuck shit up. up. All right. Well, Matt, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on and yeah. uh, we will be right back on the crash port. Hang on. <laughs> We'll see you next time on The Crash Report. While you wait, make sure to like and subscribe to the show, damn it. Thanks for listening.